If you use an Nvidia graphics card, it's very possible that you aren't getting the most out of it because you aren't using these Nvidia settings on screen. So today I'll be explaining the best Nvidia control panel settings that you should be using to get high FPS and low input delay. And yes, this works on any PC, may that be a potato PC or a god tier PC, these settings will benefit you massively. So be sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if they do. Alright, so getting straight into it, you guys firstly need to download an app called GeForce Experience. Just Google GeForce Experience, then click on Nvidia's website and you can download and install it there easily. Once you've opened it, you'll see a driver button at the top. Just click on that and make sure you've got the latest driver downloaded because nine times out of 10, the latest drivers will boost your FPS, reduce in-game crashes and overall reduce your input delay. However, sometimes the newest drivers don't work like that for everyone. So if they're not good for you, try one of these popular Nvidia drivers on screen. These are made used by pro players and to download them all you have to do is simply google the specific driver name click on nvidia's website and download slash install it from there for the majority of you watching though the latest nvidia driver should be sufficient and should work well moving on you guys now want to be on your windows desktop you then want to right click anywhere and select the nvidia control panel option to launch it once it's opened here are all of the settings we are about to change in order to optimize them so make sure to copy the settings that i use to begin under adjust image settings you guys want to select the use advanced 3d image settings next under manage 3d settings tab you want to copy these image scaling this setting adds directional upscaling and a bit of sharpening to the game's resolution that can boost your fps slightly but can also change the way your game looks so i always recommend that if you use a 1920 by 1080 resolution turn this off because you don't require a slight fps boost and also don't want any image sharpening but if you use a stretched resolution you may want to turn this on in order to get a slight FPS boost and overall improve visibility with the image sharpening. Ambient occlusion, this makes shadows and lighting more realistic and dynamic in games, which does unfortunately equal less FPS, so you definitely want to turn that setting off. Isotropic filtering, this is a filter that reduces blurriness in visual artifacts in the distance, which can actually reduce your FPS when doing so, so I recommend turning that off. Anti-aliasing modes, what these modes do is they help eliminate jagged edges on game objects by adding a smooth filter but this does come at the cost of getting far less fps so these modes i recommend you go ahead and turn them off like all of them background application max frame rate this is a setting that allows you to set a max fps for background applications but this is only really beneficial if you multitask and tab out often which if you do you can go ahead and turn this setting on and set it to like 20 fps but for most of you out there that just focus on gaming you want to go ahead and make sure this is turned off CUDA GPUs. This is a setting that allows you to select your primary GPU if you do for some reason have two GPUs. Even if you only have one like myself, it's important to actually have this on and select your specific GPU. DSR stands for Dynamic Super Resolution. This allows you to enjoy high resolutions on monitors that do not have native support for the same resolutions, which basically improves graphics in new and older games. However, this does come at a cost of FPS, so I do recommend turning this off. Same with the DSR smoothness option 2. This is just an additional DSR setting, which I also recommend turning off. Low latency mode. This is a mode that can heavily reduce latency in competitive games such as Fortnite. It does this by removing the rendering queue between the CPU and GPU, which in turn removes one latency step from your mouse click to reaching your display, which does obviously result in much lower system latency. So for this, I recommend using either on or the ultra setting. However, this setting can actually give you lower FPS for some users out there depending on your PC. As according to Nvidia, this mode has the best impact when games are GPU bound and frames are between 60 and 100 FPS. So if you unfortunately don't meet those requirements right there, you might want to go ahead and turn this setting off. But if you guys do meet those requirements, what I recommend doing is first trying on and seeing how that works out. And if that's working great, go ahead and bump it up to the ultra setting and see how that feels because the ultra setting is the best one to have the lowest latency possible. Max frame rate, this is an option that allows you to cap your FPS to a max setting, which you should do this in game to be honest and not in the Nvidia control panel, so I recommend you go ahead and turn this off. Multi-frame sampled AA is a type of anti-aliasing, which I did discuss earlier, and with those exact same reasons, I do recommend you all turn this setting off. OpenGL rendering GPU, this is a setting that allows you to choose your primary GPU if, again, for some reason you have two GPUs, so for this one I recommend using it, but just selecting your main GPU.
GPU or your best GPU again if you do have two. Power management mode. This setting allows you to choose a mode to either save power or get more performance. Optimal power will save you power and give you less FPS whereas the other setting maximum performance will use more power but it will also give you more FPS. So for that in my opinion I personally choose maximum performance but if you're concerned about power you might want to stick it on optimal power but I always want more FPS at the very minimum. Preferred refresh rate. This is a setting that is related to your monitor's refresh rate which should be on the default highest available because if you have a 144Hz monitor, a 240Hz monitor or a 360Hz monitor what this will do is it'll make sure you are on the highest refresh rate but as a rule of thumb I do recommend you go into your in-game settings and make sure your matching your monitor's refresh rate inside the game. Shader cache size this is a setting that's related to your graphics card that should be set to default. Texture filtering this allows you to decide if you prefer performance quality or a balance between the two of them and from my experience and my testing I found that the best settings are the following that's off clamp performance or high performance I actually choose high performance and the final one is having trilinear optimization on threaded optimization this setting allows you to control the use of multi-threaded optimization for games on systems with multiple cores slash hyper thread CPUs I recommend using auto as what this will do is it'll allow Nvidia to decide automatically if it will benefit you or not the general rule of thumb though is it probably will benefit you if you use four or more cores on your CPU so basically if you've got a somewhat modern CPU you should definitely use it but again I would recommend using auto vertical sync this is another setting that I highly recommend you let Nvidia decide if you need it or not so I always recommend using auto for this one and for the final setting this is actually related to VR and it should be set on one which is the default and that right there guys has been the best Nvidia control panel settings that you should be using so you can benefit from high FPS and low input delay. If this video helped in any way then please drop a like, please subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you all in the next video.